in the RBA Downtown's Transformation Fund. Lucy Mead, Director of Marketing and Development for the Church. Thank you. And Dr. Rao, thank you for your recognition, all that BCU does for downtown. Um, and I guess we're here because Kathy had heard um, this presentation at one of our Venture Red Element, one of our Venture Richmond um, meetings. And um, I think we were bumped for a Redskin um, press conference. So we, I was thrilled to be bumped to January. Anyway, um, so what I'm going to do, we can pull up um, the presentation. I think it's already. Oh, no, I was doing um, so what I'm going to do is uh, give you a, just a quick, rapid-fire overview of over 100 different images of development projects that are happening in downtown. And I am going to do it in 15 um, minutes or less. And um, then I've got some handouts for you that are in your mailbox that include the downtown development update, which basically documents what I'm going to give you an overview of. Right? And um, then a magazine about, the create, about 75 examples of creative, innovative things that are happening in downtown. And these are the folks that are filling this space. And then the Grid magazine this month that also has the new dining guide in it with over 175 restaurants downtown. So, um, so with that, let me start this little rapid fire um, tour of downtown's transformation. Um, each year we do a downtown development forum and have developers come and give folks an update. And I'm going to go through a couple of the city's um, projects which you all know about, but I want you to understand the magnitude of what's happening at once. So we've got Main Street Station that's underway, um, a $28 million restoration of the shed, which is going to be phenomenal, um, redeveloping the 17th Street Farmer's Market into a public market that has, that's flexible, that can be used for pop-up markets like South of the James or patio dining or events opening up Franklin Street Restoration. Um, and that's a lot in the bottom right there that will really transform that area. The Arts District is having an impact up on Broad Street. The Theater 4 is undergoing a major renovation. If you haven't walked down Broad lately from about Fushi to Belvedere, um, you will notice there are a lot of street level businesses. Some are retail, but some are also startups that are occupying first floor space. And then there's some little infill buildings like, or buildings like this that are being converted as condos and street level retail. So there's really a lot happening in the Arts District. There's more that's continuing to happen in Jackson Board. These are projects that were completed the second half of 2011 and 2012. So the Hippodrome didn't end this because it was in the prior years. Um, Biotech 8, this is the expansion, is probably the biggest deal who would ever guess that we would be taking down a biotech building to then expand and add uh, really two new buildings to house Health HDL, Health Diagnostics Laboratory. This is really a major project. And I want to give you just a little bit about Health Diagnostics Laboratory in case you aren't aware. There are four founders. They do laboratory testing, um, and they're all about preventive disease versus uh, just responding to it. They focus on cardiac disease, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and fatty liver disease, which more than 50 people in the U.S. have. They, this is a, a, a summer 2012 number. Over 70,000 tests per day, every day in biotech. I'll bet you that's closer to at least 80 or 90,000 now. They are in 50 states and opened four months ago in Europe. Um, and this was born two and a half, three years ago in downtown Richmond in the biotech incubator. So this is a home run for Richmond, um, and this shows sort of a sample of their growth, about 11% per month. I mean, what business doesn't just die for that kind of growth? Um, so anyway, they're expanding their existing space, um, and this was before the latest announcement, adding even more employees, close to 1,000 by the time they moved into all of them. Anyway, this is a huge success story in downtown. The other is BCU. Um, Dr. Rao, um, I mentioned a few things. I'm going to go through a bunch of projects really fast. This is a living learning uh, building that they've built on West Gray Street at Schaefer. Um, this is another one that's on Gray Street that's the north uh, of that intersection. Um, another 70 beds over at Broad and Gilmore. Um, uh, in addition to the uh, learning center at, near the Cabell Library, the 
new Institute of Contemporary Art at the corner of Belvedere and Broad. This will transform the gateway into downtown, into our city. This is an amazing project. I think $22 million has been raised with another 10 before they can start construction. There is no back door. It will be an amazing facility right there at the anchoring the Arts District. Um, additions to the Cabell Library, um, constant work in the research labs, the School of Medicine that's underway right now, $158 million, designed by I.M. Hayes Company, and then the new Children's Hospital Pavilion that Dr. Rao mentioned. If you haven't seen it, Phase 1 on Broad Street, Phase 2 on Broad, Phase 3, which is in the back, and then on the Marshall side, Phase 1, Phase 2, Phase 3. I mean, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? So we've got all these major projects, um, and then we've got smaller projects like Nathan's that took out the building next to it and expanded their corporate headquarters. This is Apple REIT, a national REIT who um, owns the Marriott and invested um, about $12, $13 million in Marriott in, uh, renovations and also is slated to do the Shaco Marriott's. Um, the John Marshall has been converted to residence and leased up faster than expected. This is all within about 12 to 18 months, everyone. This is not a 10-year perspective. If you haven't been in the John Marshall, you really need to go in and see how it's changed. Um, you know, historic tax credits, uh, federal and state, as well as the city's tax abatement program, I always say are probably some of the smartest and most strategic public policy ever passed. It's driven this restoration of downtown. We were running out of buildings and they're getting leased up. And if they weren't getting leased up, the developers wouldn't do the next one or the developer from out of town wouldn't come in to do infill. So it's really created an amazing, um, a really proud of pump, which is what, of course, it was designed to do. These are just interiors of their models. And then we're seeing another, um, another class um, C office building, the First National Bank building being converted to 148 residential that's already started leasing. Then um, G, um, Genesis Properties is doing the MotorWorks building over on Hall Street. Um, and that's going to be another 39 units of a $5 million project. They're doing this project, poorly lost on Grace, that goes pat through the alley and onto Broad Street. More loss as well as some living work spaces for um, artists. Um, and um, that they're working with um, Amada Hoffler in Norfolk to do um, the 700 Center next, which is mixed use, um, luxury apartments as well as retail space. And then they're also doing some infill up on Churchill overlooking downtown. And then, you know, the spaghetti warehouse across the river, the first building in Manchester to be used for office or, or residential or office. Um, before all the residential started over there, they're adding in the parking lot new construction um, of 84 um, like parking spaces and 150 lofts infill. Um, then historic housing has got three projects underway. The last building in the atrium walls at Cold Storage, this is north of Broad, completely leased up. All of the Cold Storage buildings have been renovated into lofts with amenities like pools and fitness centers. Rocket's View, the very end of Chaco at Pear Street, was one of the very first um, buildings to be converted to residential. In 98, it is now being redone into more upscale apartments with an affinity, affinity, in, what do you call it, affinity pool. Um, and then the laws at Canal Walk, uh, this is infill behind um, the um, Have a Nice Day Cafe, 130 new high-end units. Then over on Grace Street, oh, and the Harvester Building, another one down at um, Cold Storage has been renovated with views like that. Uh, over on Grace Street, Jernigan Hall, a smaller building, they put windows in the side and um, have leased that up as more of an affordable um, project. Then Cincy and Monument, Monument Construction has their headquarters in Shaka now, and they've been doing a tremendous amount of um, redevelopment downtown. Um, and, and new construction. The tracks um, is, is open now, but um, 43 units right there on the bottom. They just finished this whole block with Old Stone Road being the last piece of, of the block and Trolley Commons opened um, down at the bottom with adding a pool for those residents. And then Rockets is um, looking at the next phase of development, which um, would include some apartments, 150 units, some medical office, and another restaurant. 
They leased Cedar Works 2 to Brown Greer. Unfortunately, they stayed on town, but anyway. And Rawls McNeil Mitchell is going out to Rockets as well. And M. Mistro opened in late 2011. One of the big additions is more um, slips for boats and a fuel dock. Apparently, the bass fishermen were thrilled when that fuel docking station opened. And they do events down there really trying to create a community. Robin Miller, one of our perennial developers who's been developing for over you know, 15 years in downtown, is doing this building in Manchester, not on Perry Street, 44 units. He's recently finished the Pace King Mansion with little offices and apartments. And then doing behind the Pace King Mansion, um, 16 apartments in that space. Then Reynolds, you all know, is under um, construction and leasing up um, 174 units in the first phase. These developers, uh, or at least Fountainhead, is also doing South Canal Moss, which when you come over the 14th Street Bridge into Manchester and look to your right, that's that building, and that's what it will look like. Um, they also have um, Miller Brick, which is another um, property in Manchester for 110 apartments that should start this year. The Lakes, this is what I call the sort of suburban model product, <laughs> but anyway, in downtown over in Manchester. Um, she had forgotten how many hundred and some units there. Hopper Paper Lofts, um, another historic rehab um, down in, um, in Manchester. And then 2323 in Chaco Bottom is um, looking for a tenant. They have a lot of interest, but they haven't nailed it yet. This is Charles McFarland's project that will look like this with creative interiors for office. It's a great office site for downtown with expansion over into that grassy field. Um, and potentially a building on that grassy field. They're also doing some smaller products in Manchester townhouses that fill in where they're what I call those missing teeth. And so this is sort of the, I'm almost finished. This is sort of unbelievable. This is a map of Manchester, and it's in the booklet that I'm, I'm giving you. But basically, in nine years in Manchester, there have been 35 development projects, 120 artist studios, 1,571 residents either completed or underway, 315,000 square feet of, of commercial space, which is primarily for creative, you know, creative, innovative, kind of entrepreneurial type businesses are in there. And I've documented more than $225 million of total investment. And let me just say, not everybody will give me their figure, and I don't make them up. So stuff gets left out. Um, so that's pretty exciting to think, nine years in Manchester. We, you know, we really are running out of buildings. So industrial Manchester, this is what the number of units look like, completed, underway, and planned. Um, and then let me just summarize, wrap it up with some downtown population. Um, this is the pure downtown, the, um, the what do you call it, this, the uh, business district, the uh, CBD, thanks, sorry. Uh, but we've seen the population in 20 years grow to about 8,450. If you add Manchester, we're at about 9,700 in population. And if you look at the downtown master plan map of downtown, which includes VCU Academic and Oregon Hill, we're at 14,000 people living downtown as of April 2010. And that doesn't include anything that I showed you that was completed in 2011 or underway in 2012. So how about that? So who's leasing these space? They have two slots. This is a corrugated box building in Manchester. You drive by this old warehouse, you would never guess that that is the inside of, of um, the corrugated box. We've got Tumblr there and Mobilox, two very high, big high-tech companies. Um, and lots of other entrepreneurs and creatives in that whole neighborhood. And this is the Reynolds North site with the plant down, I mean south site, with the plant down and is the next big development opportunity in uh, Manchester, which would be in And that's it. Oh, and does anyone want to guess how much uh, the investment is underway in this snapshot? Completed in the end of 2011 and 2012. 1.2 billion dollars, not including 160 for the children's hospital. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Moving forward now, we're going to skip for just a moment the paper report to go to the General Assembly update provided by Jordan. We'll walk down the 